Everyone get your fuel of Nissa ready because we are going to be raiding AI generated magic cards starting off with the tire toe this is uh some sort of one red two generic saga all right they're getting into the sagas now oh all right will it danger will it zyber we've got uh for chapter one until your next turn you may cast spells from your graveyard isn't this just like isn't this just yogmoth's will this is red yogmoth's will for for the same amount of mana and you can get it for two turns yeah, we're already starting off with it dangers. I mean, the cards are always at danger. And also we got chapter three, return all creature. If the game has lasted that long, by the way, return all creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. Does that one, uh, until your next turn, you may cast spells from your graveyard. Absolutely. Hold on, can you cast it infinitely? Because it doesn't even, it doesn't even say you have to exile them. They don't go anywhere. Like you cast, it just goes back to the graveyard. Uh, it's quite, quite, uh, quite insane I guess this is better than Yogmoth's will yeah the cards the cards don't exile when you cast them super outrageously busted uh, it's got to go it go straight to jail don't print this thing ever don't make it come into existence however it is it is a legible magic card we can read it and actually make some damn sense over here all right moving on we've got ooh, we got a, a two-sided card we got the flesh mead witch breaker is a blue three generic two three dinosaur illusion you know what i was thinking like they never made any split magic cards with like creature and spell attached to it but i guess that's like the double-sided magic cards so anyway we have a four mana two three sort of uh, sort of underwhelming to be honest then we got pirates laborator labora laborator okay it's a sorcery it has aftermath so i believe you cast that from your graveyard uh, aftermath put four plus one plus one counters on target creature destroy the creature we're blowing it up oh, wait a minute how do you cast this thing it has no it has no casting cost i don't even know how you cast this card cast the card from your like i understand how you can get some cards through cascade and ether vial and as foretold this one's already in your graveyard. I don't even, I have no idea how you cast this thing. I guess you need to find a spell. You can cast any spell from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. Maybe that will work out. Adventures, you mean? Oh yeah, adventures. That's a two-sided card. True story. Do you know what? Thank you for correcting me. That also, th those are, all, that is also a two-sided card as well. They just don't look that split. I guess they did it right, you know? They could they split the card frame at the bottom instead of splitting the card in two, which is like, you know, I, I end up having to do this all the time to read these cards. It's a little awkward. You know, the little strain on my neck around here. It sort of gives a little tell away when you're playing playing the game when you turn the card sideways to read it. Oh, I wonder what they have. Anyway, um, Totally fair, actually, to be honest. Even if you can somehow get the second half of this uh, off, you know, you blow up a creature, no big deal. Great for indestructible creatures. Do you know what? That's true. That's great. You could blow up your opponent's stuff, or you could buff up your own if they if they uh, they're indestructible. Why well, have a text box with no text? Got to got to look like a magic card. You know, it's got to have that magic card feel. All right, moving on. We got the Goblin Realm. And do you know what? Hey. Three cheers to the AI that not only understood what the card was called, but also gave it the same creature type, you know. We got it. We have to give it to the AI. Usually it's like Goblin Realm and it's a sliver in the text box or something of that rather. All right, it's a three mana one one Goblin Warlock. You can untap it. So it has to be tapped already to use this ability. Do you tap target creature? So it actually combos by itself. So you can untap it then to tap it and it will tap and then you have infinite tapping and untapping if you can make use of that in any sort of really we re weird way liquid soul fly already interested gotten su super super excited over this but there's more wait there's more whenever goblin realm deals combat damage to a player oh it's got to be combat damage you can't cheat it with like a pinging uh, aura draw a card how did i that bow i think it's probably trying to say bro but Maybe, maybe trying to say bow. Your little bow. Forget to shave today? You know what? Actually, I'll tell you my strategy. I'm, I have a regional championship coming up. I don't want to bring my shaver 
and my uh, shaving cream. So I'm waiting until like the last minute on Thursday, then I'm gonna shave everything and then I don't have to bring it with me and I'll be good for the weekend. Sounds like flavor you'd make. <laughs> yeah, whenever realm. Anyway, there's a lot of weight. There's a lot of tap on tap potential in this thing. I it could it can easily. Oh no, it doesn't go off with Merfolk pilgrimage because it's not a Merfolk. Not yet, at least. Anyway, cool card. Good job by the AI. We got the Raisin Barrage. It's a black one generic instant. You may discard a permanent card. That's unique text. Usually we don't have stuff like that. It's like discard instant, sorcery, land. This is permanent card. Anything except instants and sorceries. Usually they're more specific, I guess. If you do, you may put that card onto the battlefield. What? And Raisin Barrage deals only one damage to you. We got to cheat like a gigantic Eldrazi, uh, or maybe not the Eldrazi, because they'll accidentally shuffle back into the deck. Whatever, we're cheating something big into play. We can put Planeswalkers, that, those are permanents. Could put the biggest, baddest Planeswalker onto the battlefield in exchange for one life point. This reminds me of Force of Will, which is actually outrageously busted. Uh, Force of Will, you know, can counter anything at the low, low cost of one card in one life. A singular life point. Easy. What an easy exchange. I have an o I have an Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, and I just take one damage. My good people. Yeah, Omega Danger. A lot Eldrazi. Well, yeah, but how do you get an Eldrazi in place? So you put you discard the Eldrazi as part of this thing. It would tr I guess it would trigger too late. So this whole thing has to resolve. Or is this like a delayed trigger? Like you may discard a permanent card if you do put that card onto the battlefield. Like I have no idea how this card resolves. Does the Eldrazi shuffle itself back into the library? Because they all say shuffle back into the library. Or does this resolve before, fully resolve first before the Eldrazi gets shuffled back into the library? It's discarded. The madness replaces going into the graveyard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not all the Eldrazi. That's true. Not all Eldrazi shuffle. You, go, you, you get the right one. What would you put onto the battlefield? I have nothing exciting to put on the battlefield. Wait, it says, you may discard. You can cast the spell for two men and it does nothing. You could do that too. When does the may part, yeah, does this happen upon resolution? So you could like, is this like you cast this? How did, when, when do you discard this card upon resolution or like as you're casting it? I don't, yeah, if you end of turn, it would be pretty cool. End of turn, Raisin Barrage. Does anyone have a response? And if no one, and if, like, they counterspell it. Like, I, I don't know the rules to this thing. I, it's, it's so weirdly, uniquely worded. It'd be really cool, though, to, like, bluff people. Hey, I got something big in my hand. Raisin Barrage. Do you let it resolve? Who knows what could happen? Get the counterspells out of their hand. It could be anything. Could be an Elish Norn, for crying out loud. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, broken. No, we can't have this. Can't have this in Magic the Gathering. Okay, we got the the Pyrodon Drifter. Drifting big time with moving really fast. Okay, four mana for a 2-2 two, two mirror. Ooh, we got the mirror. Something for the mirror people. Defender. Ah, that's terrible. Okay, one mana. Pyrodon Drifter becomes a copy of Pyrodon Drifter. Congratulations. You always wanted it to be yourself when you grew up. Activate only if you control two or more green permanents. This is uh, just a complete no, abomination. God, please, no. It does nothing. It, it literally does nothing. It does actually... It's really trying hard to stay out of the game and be completely worthless. <laughs> yeah. Look, I've been myself this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I'm gonna, yeah, it's going to copy itself. I've always wanted to be me, and now I can. The power the power is yours, Pyrodon Drifter. But uh, yeah, it's a completely legal magic card. You have a 4-4 four, four Grizzly Bear Blocker. Imagine the mirror players. They're like, oh man, we need something. We need some sort of gas. Come on, Wizards of the Coast. And they print Pyrodon Drifter. Yeah, sorry about that, mirror players. Better luck next set. Better luck next set. We got Hap Boasts Eyes. Uh, wherever they are. Okay, we have a black 4 generic 8-8 eight, eight legendary creature. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. Useful. Doctors come panatalize. I don't know what that means. Tap. 
gr uh, create a 1-1 green wizard transformer creature token. And it's got constellation. This is an enchantment mechanic. Uh, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, Hap Boss's eyes gets plus one plus one until end of turn. Frankly, all this is sort of sort of sucks. It's the best part of it so far is it's an eight eight for five mana, and then for uh, red white, Hap Boss eyes gets plus two plus zero until end of turn. It's a lot of words, and I don't even think it's that broken. Sure, you can play with this card. Oh, it said red, but Nikachu said green. Brace. Oh, did I? Is that how it was? No, two. Activate only if you control two more green permanents. Okay, I don't know what joke you're trying to pull off here. You're, you know, I miss say a lot of things around here, but now you're telling me I miss said something when I said it right. It's dib licking around. Absolutely. Definitely dib licking around. Oh no, the AI found the Doctor Who cards and ruined the sets. Yeah, who did? So this guy could have been a doctor. Could have been the. T it, I imagine the AI could make the twentieth Doctor, or the fiftieth Doctor of some of some sort. Oh, did I say the token was green? No, it's a red. It's a red wizard transformer creature token. All right, I misspoke on that one. Uh, sure. You know what? It's a little pushed. Honestly, it's like it's sort of good. Like five mana for an eight eight. You can see the top of your library and like manipulate it. You know, you know, crack fetch lands if it's garbage on top. It's actually pretty good, uh, but it's not too overpowered. Very doable card. Next up, we got Kanda. It's a Kanda Pros Fisper Grove a Gruft. Look, we got a Gruft here. Blue three generic three five human druid. It's got first strike, community of peep, pay two life, draw a card. Interesting. Do you want to pay that two life? Do you really bad badly want to draw that card? So you draw a very interesting design. You could die off of this thing, or you could draw a lot of, or you could draw a lot of cards. And it's not even for necropotence-like mana. You have to pay two life. That might be too much life. You 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 get drunk off of that life, get, uh, that card draw, and you will die over it. This is definitely something you could get drunk on. I'll get uh, just for, I'm not ignoring the super chats, but I'll get to all of them at the end of the show. Uh, oh my god, this is... It could be dangerous. I mean, it's a creature. Like, it's not like Necropotence where you say, Okay, I'm drawing a million cards. You have to wait each turn for this thing. I think it's Zybers. I think it. I think it's Zybers big time. Next turn, you pay only two life, draw a card. Turn after that, you pay four life, you draw two cards. It's really not that... Like, how long are you going to keep this guy in play? You're, I don't think you're going to... I don't think you're going to keep this creature in play for that long if it's that dangerous. Yeah, it's like the card draw is part of the... I think it's part of the cumulative. Yeah. Cumulative upkeep, pay two life, and draw a card. It kills you or kills itself. It kills its host. The host being you! I think this is a banger card. I think it's really cool. I actually think it's underpowered. I don't even think it's that strong. You get nothing up front. Nothing. It's just a 3-5 first striker. Next turn, you will draw one card off of it. You literally need to, I guess if you can take extra turns, you can like, you know, you can speed it up. But uh, outside of that, I don't think it's uh, that ridiculous. Yeah, probably should be a black card. Looks more black design, but uh, hey, you know what? Black and blue, they're buddies. They're buddies on the color pie. They, they teach each other things. They show each other the ropes. You know, the, 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 the blue players show the zombies what a university looks like and... Uh, the zombies show the wizards what a pile of crap looks like. Okay, I like this card. Cool card. Next up, we got the Huskal Deity. And it's adorable. It's a green, red, three generic, two, two cat warrior. With Reed Ahlon. Whatever the hell that is. Does it say Ahlon on the... It says Athlon on the book. It is the wed... Weird core. I'm reading Weird Core. It's reading Weird Core, people. You don't lose the game. Well, that's that's actually pretty good. It has When Defender and Convoke and Exile Huskal Deity. All creatures get minus one, minus one. Why do we even want to do that? That is... Under what circumstances... I, this card is better in play. I don't lose the game. When on earth am I going to sacrifice it to give all the other creatures minus one, minus one? Yeah, when is defend? Yeah, when is defender? 
Do what time it is? It's defender time. When Huskal Deity will let you know. Yeah, in response to removal. I guess, oh yeah, I guess so. In response to removal. That's true. You have nothing to lose. Because you're going to lose your uh, Huskal Deity anyway. You don't lose the game. Well, for as long as you're around here. You definitely want to exile it so you can finally... <laughs> Yeah, some games might be going on for so long, it's like, I can't lose the game, but I can't win the game either. So, you know, so like, you know what? Let's exile this damn thing. Don't convoke it or it has defender. Oh, interesting. Like, it gets defender under some circumstances? Or maybe when you convoke it, it gets defender? Well, anyway, I mean, the card doesn't make any damn sense. It's a lot of... And what the hell is Reed Echelon? Was that... Is that like read ahead on on sagas? Is that like a is that a mechanic that is yet to be seen? Well, anyway, reading and Magic: The Gathering they do go together. If you can't read, you're in a lot of trouble for this game because there's a lot of text. If you can't read the text, you are incredibly screwed. In response to someone taking control, it's two power after all. That's true, actually, as well. It's an anagram. Oh, well, maybe. What's the anagram too, though? Uh, anyway, yeah, we're not that's uh, not passing around here. You're adorable. You're really cute. You got your little bow and arrow, but uh, no, go read somewhere else. I'm gonna read on to the grower at the s grower at the sunset. It's a red blue one one uh, horse beast. The text is bleeding into the power and toughness box. It grower at the sunset enters the battlefield with more plus one plus one counters on it. You heard that right more of them uh, if you can at least get one in the first place now for a single snow two out of six that's it it doesn't gain it it's just two out of six and you know what we can even reduce that ratio to one out of three if we want to creatures without flying can't attack you or planeswalkers you control finally something that's actually practical here and other knights you control not that it was a knight in the first place it might be a nightmare, if you get what I'm saying. But other knights you control get plus one, plus one. Yeah, more counters! That might danger! <laughs> I rate this snow a two. <laughs> two out of six is three, right? No, six out of two is three. Six over two is three. Two out of six is one third. Uh, I don't know math that deeply, but I know that much. It's a moat on a, and a lord. And apparently a 2-6. And also it enters the battlefield with more plus one plus one counters on it. Not not really specifying how many more, how many it started with. Your jokes are bad and you should feel bad. No, 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 I do it shamelessly. Just like how I read the cards wrong. Shameless, shameless stream around here. My, uh, my drama teacher ta taught me if you're going to stink, you stink big. You screw up big time. You just power through it. Don't look ashamed. They can, the audience can feel the shame, but they can't feel the shamelessness. Okay, uh, anyway, this card's unplayable. <laughs> Complete, I mean, it's a moat for two, if you can ignore everything else, it's a moat for two mana, but the rest of the card just, uh, it's not even legible. Doesn't make any sense. Then the mechanics of this game. We got Karn! Karn has arrived. Maller of Manchio Karn has has learned what jujitsu. It's some. It's learned the art. Some art of something. Okay. Uh, it's four loyalty. It's six mana. Also plus one. Target creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it gains trample. First strike, double strike. Yeah, because you can never have enough strikes, right? You need first strike and double strike at the same time. Indestructible, lifelink, reach, trample, and vigilance. That's that's for the hardened skills players out there. It's also pro for the uh, what the proliferate players over there. He's become he's become a mall cop, I guess so. Yeah, it's basically triple strike. I don't even think it's triple strike. Like it will the first strike and double strike is the same damn thing. It's just gonna strike once at the first damage step. Uh. You can't strike more that you can't strike twice in the first damage trap as far as I'm concerned as far as I'm concerned I've never seen it in action though. Yeah, it's permanent. Oh Yeah, it's gonna be permanent. It's not gonna be until end of turn You just grant it to that card and it's like a god Karn is basically bestowing its power to the creatures with counters on it now 
Three strikes, you're out. Yeah, in exile. <laughs> oh, did it trample twice? Trample and trample. It's a double strike. It's a triple striker, and it's a double. It's a double trampler. Could trample over you twice, run over you, run you back for good measure. Okay, we have a second ability. I mean, there's more to this card. This is the card that keeps on giving. Minus nine. No, I don't even know how you get there. Uh, you get an emblem with creatures you control have when this creature dies. Target creature gains flying until end of turn. When this... Which creature? It's not even specifying. That is such a weird emblem. So I guess you have to choose a creature. And then when it dies, target creature gets flying until... It's, that is such a weak, useless... I think they screwed... Honestly, I think they screwed up the ultimate and the plus one. They probably meant to switch them around. There was a switcheroo. There was like some... There was sort of a mistake here. All creatures have this... All creatures have this... Did it say that? Huh? Creatures you control have when this creature... Oh, okay. That's really interesting. So when any creature dies... Uh... I got it. So whenever all creatures have this ability, then when it dies, another creature gets flying until end of turn. Really bizarre. Every creature has the rules text. Karn, Maller of Manchino. You know what? I don't know. Is it even broken? It's six mana. And also, you can, it's only good for the creatures with plus one, plus one counters. And how broken is the creature? It's like a trampling, double striking, indestructible, reach, vigilance creature. Uh, and Commander, I think it's like, okay. I think the plus one is really glorified, but it's probably not completely broken. I would give it a pass. If anyone's, uh, want to make, uh, Karn decks, well, there you go. You have another Karn to add to the... Your kindred deck. Put into play with the black instant from before. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! That's right. We put into play with the black instant from... Yeah, the black instant speed permanent thing. But you still need creatures with counters on them. Otherwise, it's stone cold useless. Moving on. We got Balathor. Reblesser Mornayer. It's a green, three generic, three one Eleth. That is a new creature type. It's, it's some something that went extinct. The AI went deep into the history of human, not even humanity, the history of the universe, and found some creatures that we don't even know exist. Balathor Reblesser Mornayer has mountain flying. What does that mean? Does that mean if my opponent has a mountain, I have flying? That is unique. You know what? That's like, it's like island walk or mountain walk or plains walk. But instead of giving it completely unblockable, if you have this land, it just has flying. I think that's cool. That's how, that's how, that's how I'm inter interpreting it. Instead of like mountain walk, it's got mountain flying. This creature has flying when you control a mountain. That's new design space, if you ask me. You know, this creature is only motivated to fly when, it, when there's a mountain. Only if you control... I think it's if the opponent controls a mountain. You know, just like land walk. Like, I'm looking at this like it's land walk. Like, why not? What is a mountain? Mountains of mountains. Basic of mountain. Non-basic mountain. There are a lot of mountains in this game. Mountain walk really needed a nerf. Exactly. Well, I don't know if you know this, but actually land walk is not evergreen anymore. They don't make land walk cards. They'll reprint old land walk cards, but they won't make new ones. Because apparently, apparently it's a real feel bad for new players. They're like, why you teach me how to block when I can't even do it? The damn mountain, damn hill giant coming in for damage, punishing me for putting basic mountain in my deck. Yeah, so anyway, mountain is misspelled. Oh, is it? Mount, oh, it's Mountian. Whatever. You know the AI. For some, It's got the entire... It is funny how the AI is supposed to be this superhuman, all-knowing uh, entity, and it still makes spelling mistakes. It's pretty funny. It's a mount. It's a mountain. I I will fly over your mountain. Anyway, I think it's cool. It's gonna pass in my book. Let's fix that spelling error. We got Frong. Frong the Aquarian. It's, it's an ongoing enchantment. 
It reminds me of uh, continuous artifacts, actually. That was like an old artifact type. Continuous artifact. And now we've got, we'll supersede that with the ongoing enchantment. A permanent that just stays here for a very, it's not, you don't spend it one time. Yeah, Marvel Snap, bleeding it. Oh, is that true? I have no, I, I don't know the reference whatsoever. Okay, plus, it's got Planeswalker abilities. Plus three, Frong the Aquarian deals three damage. Three damage. Uh, divided as you true among any number of, among any of the non-artifacts you control. Why on earth the hell are we, like, damaging our own artifacts? No, sorry, non-artifacts. All right, so it keeps the artifacts safe. Minus two, tap target creature. That's totally fine. Minus, is it minus ability? Minus three. So, so, so far, it's a playable card. The loyalty can go up, the loyalty can go down. You get an emblem with whenever a creature you control attacks, each opponent fights. <laughs> each opponent fights that creature? How do you do that? I don't, I don't get it. All right, everyone. Not your creatures fight, you fight. You're, pay you're picking a fight with my creature. Everyone's going to exchange... I guess everyone exchanged their life total for power with my creature's, uh, with my creature's power. <laughs> Go home, Frog. You are drunk. Very drunk. Yeah, the loyalty. Very loyal. Wait, it enters with zero... Yeah, it will enter with zero, zero loyalty. As far as I'm concerned, it can gain... It can... It has a Planeswalker ability, so it will gain loyalty. It won't die, though. You know why it won't die at zero loyalty? Because it's an ongoing enchantment. Just to remind you all. Omega Brawl, creatures go in one leave one leaves alive. I guess so. Can I punch the card? I suppose so. A player can leave Yeah, a player can easily win against a singular card. Uh whenever a creature you control attacks, unless that creature is indestructible. You should play EDH on one of the gameplay channels. Uh I would have to construct an EDH deck. I'd be very fearful that they know that my EDH, EDH skill, very, very low. Very, very low. It says fight the creature card specifically. I know, I understand. Anyway, that uh, that doesn't make any sense. Also, ongoing enchantment, get out of here. Also, Planeswalker abilities on an enchantment. Oh, it's five mana, by the way. It's got, I totally missed that. And some weird symbol on the top left corner. If Chaos Orb has taught me anything, it's that I can beat a card. <laughs> It can be done. What does it enchant though? I think it's just a global enchantment. It's just a regular enchantment. Uh, we got the Alamore, the Sword War Portal. It's a one mana legendary artifact construct. Mutate. Uh, for mutate? That is so weird. Okay, six mana mutate for black, white, four generic. Okay, it's it's a legendary artifact construct. It's it's got no power creature type. I don't even know what we're mutating for. Mutate artifacts. Yeah, finally we're mutating artifacts. And you know how you know you could choose one to have the power and toughness or the other. In this case, this one doesn't have power and toughness, so you're never gonna choose it. So we got flying. What are we gonna mutate into? Flying. First strike, Vigilance, and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you may pay one. If you do, search that player's library, what the hell, for a card, that, that card, put that card into your hand, then shuffle. Whenever you cast, you are going to be the player. I guess you could cast cards of your opponents, and then search their library, and then put it into your hand? That doesn't work. <laughs> Okay, now uh, we also have pay five, tap, Alamore, the Sword War Portal deals 13 damage to any target. Okay, we got to the broken part. It's for one mana. You can find this off of Urza Saga, pay five, tap, and just like completely dome someone for like 13 damage. Yeah, that's a lot of danger in one activated ability. Yeah, it was so close. <laughs> so close yet so far. And then we pay nine, tap, draw a card. Well, we get some, yeah. I don't know why that that's what we're doing. I mean, the, honestly, there could be some, sp the, you rip this off the top of your deck, you have nothing on board, you might need to draw cards more than dealing 13 damage to anything. But anyway, it's better and more repeatable lava axe, I suppose so. Anyway, get it out of here. To the Yurank with that one, to the Yurank. We got, do you know what we got? We got Sp Sponsors. Sponsors like FusionGamingOnline.com. You love the fake AI-generated cards. But how about the real cards? 
And you know what you're going to store them in? Deck boxes, sleeves, binders, and more. 20% off all accessories at FusionGamingOnline.com. Don't forget, Murders at Karlov Manor has just come out. Get your singles hot and ready at FusionGamingOnline.com. Don't forget to use coupon code NIKACHU at checkout for 5% off all your purchases. It's a Canadian store, but they ship worldwide. We're also going to thank Mana Traders, the premier place for renting magic cards online to play any deck, any format you want. You want to try out Pioneer for a second? You don't want to invest like $300, $400 into a deck? Well, don't buy those cards. You rent them with Mana Traders. In fact, the best thing to do be ever, before, before committing to a deck is renting all the different archetypes to see what's best for you. You can support the channel using my Mana Traders link in the description below or save 10% off your first two months using coupon code NIKACHU underscore ZWX. And back to AI nonsense. And that it, that nonsense is called the Siren of the Steeled Miona. It is, uh, is a green, black, two generic bird werewolf. And it's a 2-2 creature. With Forest Walk. They'll bring Forest Walk back, people. And it's partying. Is that like party? Like if you have a party of like wizard, cleric, and all those other creatures, then you have a party? Yeah. Whoa, it's a party, people. Where's my party sound effect? Let's, let's get that party on. Whenever a permanent and opponent controls dies, scry one. That's actually a permanent. Only creatures are allowed to die in this game. A permanent, like, you know, a planeswalker going to the graveyard doesn't die. A land going into the graveyard doesn't die. We're not holding a funeral for your lands. I know how much you might want to do that. You want to hold a memorial after that Armageddon. But, uh, no, it does, that's not how the rules work around here. I mean, I get, I'm trying to think. If you animate your permanents into creatures and they die, that's fine. But they were creatures anyway. How does one become a bird werewolf? I've got no idea. It's called magic. It's completely called magic anyway. Partying too. Search your library for two other creatures with the following creature types. Cleric, wizard, warrior, rogue, and put them into your hand. Take two damage. Is that a real ability? Do planeswalkers die? They don't. I don't know what happens to them. Maybe they like faint like they do in Pokemon. You have defeated their Pokemon. Their Pokemon has fainted. Nothing dies in that game. Planeswalkers and creatures die. Frankly, I don't feel like planeswalkers die because like one goes to the graveyard and then I could just recast it from my hand. Yeah, it's like it's magic. We don't have to explain. It's like a movie. It's like, but why did that happen? That doesn't make any sense. It's a movie, damn it. It's not supposed to make sense. Maybe if all the villains were all-knowing entities and God and that they, they Maybe things would have played out differently, but they played out stupid because anyway, the 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 villain would always win. Um. Anyway, I don't know what partying is, so disqualified. But if it's in the graveyard, it did die. Does your lightning bolt die when you play your lightning bolt? Did the bolt die, or did it extinguish? There was no life to that lightning bolt in the first place. Players don't die. Players get destroyed. The AI has died. Yes. The players get destroyed. Everything gets destroyed. I feel like someday they will change the keyword dies to another thing. The year is 2040 and dies doesn't even exist anymore. Okay, Tarfin Step. It's a three-man enchantment. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, put a quest counter on Tarfin Step. Uh, also pay two. Tap. Add. So it's like a filter for red and colorless for each quest counter. Oh my god! For each quest counter on Tarfin Step. That's actually crazy. This actually is fair for sure. I don't know. Does it, did any enchantment player looking for more mana? I hear it is. So you cast enchantment spells. This thing gets bigger. And eventually you can go for the big mama play where you tap it for like... I don't know. 10 mana and then cast your broken red spells. And you can spend it on anything. It is, yeah, interesting. Very, very interesting. A very sophisticated card for the, the 21st century over here. Some people think it's Zybers. It's good, but most enchantments deck, most enchantment decks don't use red. Oh, they will now! They never had a good reason to, until the Tarfin step came around. Finally, my Zur commander. <laughs> At least it can't go in Sithis? I suppose not. Okay, for Ginka says print it. I mean, it's like it's like a storage land, right? It costs three mana. I mean, you could get this out. 
it's like a turn two play. You, is that, are you really that excited to play this thing on turn two? But it will get exponential over time. Gen loves this. Now I win with Heliod Helix. It's possible. Surprising this isn't... This is colorless. Yeah, it's adding specifically colorless mana. So you can cast your Eldrazi. Hey, it's all, you gotta... Everyone's like, how are you cast your Eldrazi? Well, you got the Tarfin Step over here. It's gonna help you cast those big baddies. This thing would go nuts with Atraxa. Good thing she's redless. That's correct. No Atraxa for you. We got the the Mystic Force. Uh, it is... It looks like I could buy this online or something. As a, some sort of bead art or something. Okay, we got a black 1 generic 2-2 two, two insect. With haste! Those insects are fast. When Mystic Force enters the battlefield, look at the top. Look at the top. All cards of target player's library. All of them. Then proliferate. So I get to look at your entire library. Everything. Whatever you got on top, I can... <laughs> what do you got? What do you got in your deck, by the way? Mystic Force says, when enters the battlefield, I look at the top of everything. Top of them all! Yeah, all the cards. Technically, they're all on top of the table. Mystic For Mystic Force is a Power Rangers season that used funny ma <laughs> that used magic. Why top if you see all the library? Uh, and you can look at your own library too. Actually, you can look at your own library to see how like how deep all the good cards are. You know exactly how all in you have to be with uh, your card draw or your milling effect. Oh, that seems actually pretty rude. You Mystic Force, see some bomb on your opponent's deck, and then you mill it right in their graveyard. Yeah, I knew! Mystic Force told me. I've been listening to the Mystic Force. The Mystic Force has been telling me things. And it tells me that you have a one ring three cards deep. And now I'm going to use my Ruin Crab to mill it into that graveyard. Yeah, you don't even shuffle. Well, it would be completely useless after you shuffle. You want to know exactly what's going on on that li in that library. Lantern Control has a successor and a beat stick. It can still it can attack for two. Let's not forget, it still does something around here. Okay, cool. I like the card. I don't think it's broken or anything. It's, it's literally a haste grizzly bear that gets you some. If, if they shuffle their library, they've undone everything. Proliferate makes it broken, does it? Uh, enters the battlefield. Oh yeah, I forgot about the prol proliferate. Is that broken? I really don't know how good or bad proliferate is. Nobody proliferates in competitive magic, except for maybe Yawgmoth players, but like if they got a Yawgmoth in play, then the game's over anyway. It's an insect for Grist. Oh my god! The Yawgmoth players in modern, they've found it. This is like a new tool or something. It has haste, looks at the top of their entire library. No, it isn't broken. All right, doable? Doable it is. Pass. The Gear of sing Singularition. I'm going to assume that is not a real word. For white, red, one generic. It is a legendary enchantment. Whenever you discard a card, Gear of Singularition deals one damage to any target. People make fun of me for pronouncing cards all the time, but then I have to read all these fake words all the time. I hope that's a fake word. My vocabulary is not that deep. Uh... So you did. Uh, so anyway, so if you have a means of discarding cards, uh, you can deal damage to people. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may pay white if you do create a blood token. Oh, so that's what can start the chain reaction. That makes you discard a card. It actually makes a lot of damn sense. All hail the gear, the gear of singularition. Literal ETB proliferate is fine and don't break anything. Oh, okay, that's good for the last one. This combos with the two mana. You may discard a card from earlier in the stream that's true is there not anything where is there a card where if you discard a card you draw a card there's got to be a card like that oh no probably not that sounds broken that can't that can't be a thing that's like a that because then you would just sift through your entire deck i was just thinking like if you can discard a card you keep dealing damage but if you keep drawing cards you can keep dealing damage busted with uh callistus there are white vampires it's a chocolate donut is it I don't know what this is. It's a very, uh, you could say it's a shiny donut in the middle of the ocean, that's fine. Uh, there are AI cards with discard a card, draw, 
Oh, yeah, well, there, there are AI cards with that ability. And at that point, you don't even need the gear of Singularation. Anyway, okay, cool card. Uh, apparently not broken by itself and good value. Okay, we got the... The power, people! Does anyone practice their meditation in the morning? The power of meditation. It is a blue instant. Target creature you control fights another target creature. What the hell? Like, under what circumstances are you fighting people when you meditate? It's like, I, I have now meditated. I am ready to kick some ass. That's what the power of meditation is probably telling you. Alright, I've got my meditation. Now I can hit you twice as hard as I could before. Yeah, I've... I have meditated and I saw war! I saw blood in my meditation. I have seen things. Yeah, monks meditate. Fights in the mind. Yeah, I guess so. You're, fi you're fighting demons. Demons in your head. Fight. Yeah, target creature you control fights another target creature. That's so funny. And that's the power of meditation, people. Yeah, fight in blue is bust. And for one mana. You see, when blue fights, they do it right. I guess it's Kung Fu. Yeah, that makes some sense. Good flavor for a D&D &D monk. <laughs> Pow yeah, power of meditation, aka Jeskai. Essentially. That's how you get, like, ninjutsu. Hey, we got ninjutsu stuff. We got ninjas in blue. So it's not that ridiculous that, you know, the creatures fight other creatures. To be fair, this is worse bushwhack. Uh, so that's the cool cost of being blue. True story. As a green player, I am angry about this color, color pie creep. AI got people fired from MTG. <laughs> okay, anyway, the power of meditation. It's... I don't even like it. I wouldn't even play it. I'm a blue player. And I play with creatures. The Ice Fang... The Ice Fang Measure. It's a blue six generic 2-1 goblin warrior. And when Ice Fang Measure enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless you return an untapped permanent you control to its owner's uh to its owner's hand i gotta it when it airs the bat i have to sacrifice it immediately unless i return an untapped permanent this there is actually a lot of cards and it's only a two one for six for seven mana bola of a scorch unit the heart of trees Will be a strike in that dreams that prospect them. Yeah, well said, Ice Fag Measure. And frankly, nobody is going to listen to you. Mm. It's terrible garbage. It, it is technically playable. It is a doable card. Uh, but <laughs> that's my Verkinka. The now that's value. I would not pair Ice Fang Measure son synonymous with uh, with value. Yeah, very profound flavor text over there. Yeah, sto yeah, it is. <laughs> Again, stone cold, unplayable. Get it? Stone cold. As stone cold as the Ice Fang measure. Probably measured things in Imperial. Instead of uh, the metric system. Okay, we got the Cephalid Kring. Is this cringed? Or Kringed? Cephalid Kringed. It is a goddamn octopus on a tree folk. Okay, it is a... Or a Cephalid, I should say. It's a green for generic 3-3. Three, three. With menace! You know why it's got menace? Because it's literally a cephalid on a tree. Whenever cephalid cringed becomes tapped, you may gain control of target creature with, fl with flying and each player until end of turn. That's actually broken. You gain control of each player until end of turn. This card started off so stupid and that very last line of text broke it in half. I mean, this plus what's it called? Um, spring leaf drum? I mean, it's over. It's just over. You're going to... Oh, but you can only control them on your turn. You can't control their next... Well, you can control their next turn, but if you tap it on their turn. Yeah, who needs control of flying when you control the players? Do I have to target a flyer? You may gain control of target creature with flying and... Oh, I may. Do I need... Is Does there need to be a flyer in play? I can control my own flyer, though. You may gain control of target flying and each player until end of turn. Oh, you absolutely control the players, 100%. You get to look at their hand. You can play, play, spend their mana. You can do whatever you want. Control the player on your turn. You control it on their turn, really. 
Because you, you can a activate this, uh, so long as this card becomes tapped on their turn through like Springleaf Drum or the ability of some other creature, or you tap it with like Fire and Ice or something like that, it's going to trigger. And you gain control of all, all the players. You need valid effects for all the effects. All right, we need a flyer in play. That's it. But I think I think it's pretty good. This with exactly this with Seaborn Muse. Untap every turn. Tap every turn. It's over. This makes it so your entire board gets unblocked. I wouldn't use it like that. But whatever. The target needs to be valid for the ability to trigger. All right, that's fine. That's fair. So we're going to just gain control of a flyer. We will play our own flyers. We will gain control of our own flying creature. That's right. It's like buying your own pet after you've already owned it. They, You control how they block and respond to spells. Absolutely. Um, anyway, I, I don't know if it's still broken. I'm going to still say it's broken. <laughs> Getting gaining control of everybody, uh, and a and a flying creature, for just tapping, I think is beyond bonkers. Okay, we got the the Valley Sangirin. It looks like Godzilla. It's a black black three generic six five Leviathan. Oh, they're doing Leviathans right now. It's got flying and indestructible. Uh, how many flying indestructible creatures are there for five mana? Valley Sangirin must be blocked if able. Well, I mean, who? what does the valley care? It is the, literally the valley. Uh, if it's blocked, it's blocked. It's indestructible, though. Whenever Valley Sangren deals combat damage to a player, we flip a, we flip a coin. <laughs> if you win the flip, remove a plus one plus one counter from Valley Sangren. We don't even have a counter on it. If you do create a 5-5 five, five red, uh, red dragon creature token with flying. Oh, I get it. So if we get counters on this... We can remove them if we win the flip and create a 5-5 five, five red dragon. Do you think it's Zybers? I can't tell if it dangers or not. It looks fine. I mean, it's 5 mana. It's flying indestructible. Although, it's like removal. You just attack the person who has a creature. They have to block it. And then after they block it, I mean, it dies. This thing is not going to die. It's got indestructible. Needs a you may, but it's good. You, you mean you may, you may wear, or you may, when you win the flip, remove a counter, or you may remove a counter. No, it's forced. You have to remove that counter. You have no choice around here. You summon the 5 5 red dragon. Flying might be a downside here, is it? Oh, you're right. So, like, they can't actually block with crappy creatures. It's been designed well, then. Designed very well. It's been balanced out. That's called balance. Well designed AI. Two points. This thing is not unco. I don't know what that means. Yep, give him plus one plus. You have to give it a counter, then target it with a Karn Planeswalker. <laughs> yeah, give it the counter from. Yeah, give it a counter. Target with the Planeswalker, so it's got like double strike. All the, it already has indestructible, but it'll have like life link and vigilance and everything else. Fun thing to do is combo this with a gain control of each player AI card. Oh, yeah. It's amazing how many playable AI cards are out there. And mind you, a lot of people always ask me if uh, Nikachu play with these AI cards. I mean, I don't have a play. I don't have the time to print these out or a play group that would even be willing to do this with me. Uh, but like Card Market made millions of videos like this. So highly encourage you to just look up Card Market AI MTG cards and it'll definitely come up. They're hilarious. Okay, uh, let's give it a pass. It's Zybers. It's Zybers for me today. And this thing definitely drank some uh, fuel of Nissa in the morning. Uh, okay, what is this? We got we got to go to the big screen. Oh, too big. Can we go smaller? Uh, okay, whatever. Big enough. It's too big. How do I do this? Okay, whatever. You're just going to have to trust me. Uh, Canpians. Like, what is this? Two, it's a double-sided card, I guess? Oh, yeah, it is. It's Canpians. It's a green sorcery. Regenerate all permanents target opponent controls. Untap another target artifact and opponent controls. Rege it's a sorcery, though. So you have to... Okay, I mean, I guess that's fine. So for one green, everything is regenerated. And you untap another target artifact. Someone else controls. So you, I don't know, untap their their soul ring or something give them more mana 
And then you call to odds for a white, red, blue, two generic as flying. Tap. Foo! Each of them chosen a hund. If two is vehicled, call to odds, gets plus one, plus one, and you gain one life. It uh, just fell apart there at the end. Yeah, not doable. Chaos ensues. Chaos ensues. A little bit. A little bit of chaos there. A lot less chaotic cards than usual. Nikachu totally did not notice the instant. Is there an instant creature? Oh my god, it's an instant creature! Oh, you guys can't see this. Hold on. Um, can I open image a new tab? You guys gotta see this. The power and toughness here. How do I... There we go. It's The power and toughness is Mitraba. It's Mitraba. I have nothing else to say about that. That's just, that's just, that's it. That's everything I had to say about that. Anyway, send it to the trash. We don't, we don't need this card. Mitraba it is. It's for the final words before it got sent to the shredder. Okay, dance of protection. Target cars. <laughs> we have to target the cars. It says so in the name. So hit them vehicles, people. Uh, green, green, red, five generic sorcery. Skip your library. When you control no island, sacrifice Dance of Protection. Target cars. You can't... It's not even a permanent type. And target opponent loses eight life. It's, it's actually the most legible thing on this uh, on this card. That makes some sense. But they look they look like they're having a good time, though. They are, they are dancing on top of the cars. You're not... The insurance is not going to pay for that, though. Especially since you bragged about it in a Magic the Gathering card. Yeah, Diblicking ensues. Definitely diblicking around here. I didn't know Target sells cars. <laughs> now that okay, I didn't even think about it like that. Uh, is it skipping like hopping over it? I I, I guess so, because that's what's being depicted in this uh, in this in this picture. I mean, where are the cars even? Are they on the moon? Can you sacrifice it after being cast? No, no, you can't. You can only sacrifice things that are in play. You can't sacrifice things on the stack. Unfortunately, you have to skip your library. Anyway, I saw... I saw enough. This one can go to the Urank as well. Okay, uh... We got Edgar Gushaysher. Is a red 3 generic 4-3 human with Shroud. When Edgar Gushaysher becomes blocked, it gets plus... Sorry, minus X plus X until end of turn. Where X is its power. So it's going to lose all its power. But then it's going to gain 4 toughness. Because the X was equal to its power. It's interesting. So, like, if it's not blocked, take 4 damage. But if it is blocked, I mean... It's not going to die, probably. It gets minus 4 plus 4. Scriptions of honor is home, but in the honor it takes. That's right, it takes the honor. Well spoken, Edgar. I really appreciate that. N true words have never been better spoken. And what the hell is going on? It looks like Edgar Mar Edgar Edgar someone is getting taken over by some sort of AI virus. It's turning it this person's turning into a goddamn machine. From like way deep into the future. So forgive my ignorance, but doesn't Shroud say that it wouldn't get its own abilities? Um, no, no, no. It can't. Shroud just means it can't be targeted. It can still get abilities. It's the. It's is it the AI? The AI is warning us. Oh, is this the Shroud? The Shroud is this weird-looking shielding protection, I guess. That's, uh, I guess somewhere deep in the future, we won't have hazmat shoots, suits. We'll have something that, like, protects us from rays of the sun and uh, bullets. It'll protect you from bullets. This seems like a weird limited card. Yes, it does. It looks like a very weird limited card. I don't even know if it's a cube all-star. That's, th that's taken a little bit too far. I would not put this in my cube. Okay, we got the hand. The hand... Sorry, Hand the Meld Wall. It is a blue-white, one generic, one-one bird. Uh, with Evoke! So we can evoke... <laughs> I don't know why we're evoking it in play for more mana than we can actually cast it, but sure. I guess it's just if you're screwed on blue and white, you can pay pay the red. 
Uh, is this a Woo Bird card? No, it doesn't have green. Okay, so for Orzov, tap. Put all creature cards from your hand onto the battlefield. What the hell? I don't even know if it dangers. Is this even good? So three man, turn turn three, and then next turn we can like spew the rest of our cards. It's like a weird, it's like a, sh it's not even show and tell. Yeah, keep your hands off of the meld wall. Yeah, Nanny? It, I, it, does it danger? I don't get it. It doesn't even have haste. You guys think it dangers. Everyone thinks it's broken for some damn reason. I look at this card and I'm like, this card you sucks. It's a one one. You're gonna like you're gonna play it. It's gonna die by next turn. No one's gonna no one's gonna pass the table around and let you untap with that thing. Turn four blightsteel, which doesn't even win the game by itself either. Show and tell each creature in your hand. Yeah, but next turn, and you still have to activate the ability. I mean, you could go with hand of meldwall, and someone just goes pithing needle hand of meldwall. That's why it has the evoke when it has. Then it has haste. No, evoke doesn't give it haste. Suspend gives haste. Evoke just means that you can play it for free for that cost. It still has summoning sickness. Yeah, definitely a removal check card. If you give it haste or flash, it can be dangerous. Well, I mean, you can say that about any card. Yeah, if I turn into a creature and give it double, st if I turn this artifact into a creature, and then animate it, and then give it double strike and haste and triple strike. You and vigilance, yeah, sure, anything can be a danger. Unearth, yeah, unearth gives haste. Unearth gives haste. Weirdly, suspend gives haste if it's a creature. But not intuitive at all. Tap at the end of the last player's turn. If you get it that far, I think it's fine. Everyone else thinks it's broken. You all let us all know in the comments section below where you stand with the hand of Meldwall. I will say, and it voted for. Doesn't vote for deeply, doesn't vote for flying. It doesn't have either. So I guess it votes for that poodle. What was the poodle's name again? Sprout. Votes for Sprout, probably. It's not deeply, it's not flying, so it's got to be that middle ground. Where you can touch the grass. Next up, we got Kinnison Goria. It is a red instant. Uh, target player discards their hand. Oh my god, it's like the opposite of one with nothing, except it hits the other person's hand. Uh, oh, unless they pay five life. Then that's sort of fine. Okay, so flashback for a green, red, one generic. I actually think this is fine. Actually, maybe it's not fine. Maybe it's broken in... It's probably broken in one-on-one -on -one play. I would not be surprised if, like, Burn in any format wants this card. Because like all it like what it is what it says is discard your hand you don't get to play magic or I dealt five whole damage to you so this is probably not that good in commander because you have 40 life but in a 20 player game I mean this is insane it's probably and it's a weird and it's weirdly balanced because if you play it very early it's strong but if you top deck this at the end of the game like okay I have no hand I don't have a hand anymore whatever so maybe it's even high variance yeah what a punisher card what a punish you. Seems really strong. One map for five damage, but only at the start of the game. Super high. I, th I think it dangers, but I can't be sure. Dredge players rubbing their hands maliciously. Well, they well actually, dredge players would prefer to just... Dr I mean, they prob probably would play this card, but they would actually... Actually, maybe they wouldn't play this card, because they could play with one with nothing for forever, but they choose not to play it. They need to draw cards. Anyway, uh, I'm not sure how good or bad this card is. I'll let it give it a pass. Five damage for one mana. Give it to me, says Crackling Goblin. Strictly, it is a strictly better one with nothing. And let's remember that one with nothing sees zero play. Nobody plays with one with nothing. It is one with itself in the trade binder. And the bulk bin. Surge of death for a white one generic. It's an aura. Enchant creature. Enchant creature has base, power, and toughness 2-2. Two, two. It has flying, trample, and activated abilities can't be activated. And its controller can't get a minotaur deck. <laughs> You can't be playing a Minotaur deck. Yeah, it just it's almost giving you good advice. There're not a lot of good Minotaur decks over there. It's, it's, that's the weird that's it's like that's it's sort of giving it's sort of digging into the player at the end. You know, like uh it has all this stuff. Oh, by the way, put down the Minotaur deck. Look, there are better decks out there. There's better decks in red. You know, I know you want to play that Didgeridoo. But it's not that good. You don't have the support in 2024. 
Yeah, so like the AI is secretly sending a message to the Minotaur players out there. I always find that if you have to fill your deck with changelings, maybe the creature type has a problem. You know, maybe the creature type has a problem. Damn, I can never buy the Minotaur deck now. That's right. Yeah, can't enchant Minotaur. Never. Minotaur players say, this effect is redundant. <laughs> Man, I was just about to bu build that Minotaur deck. Neheb decks are scared of this card. The Death Bell of War Cry Horse. Uh, so it's for life. Anti-Minotaur decks. Yeah, call Minotaur. He's crying. What does it do? It has base tap, base tap. It removes all the abilities, but the the creature can't get a Minotaur deck. Well, okay. Well, anyway, that doesn't make any sense. So we technically have to disqualify it. But uh, other than that, it's hilarious. Okay. Time for the super chats. For each super chat, we look at one extra card. We've got Tristan. Another, another for the show. Let's go. One more for the road. We got the Unified Aslant. Uh, it is a white one generic enchantment. And the, the, there's a sign with two options. You can don't or you can don't. If it's, if it's neither day nor night, which is just completely stone cold impossible? Like, how is it going to neither be day or night? Uh, it becomes day as Unified Aslant enters the battlefield. If it's not, so it will never become day because it will be day or night. So if it's day, it's day. If it's night, it's still not going to be day because it needs to not be night. Oh, oh, I get it. If it, if we don't have the ability yet in play, okay, that's fine. That actually makes some sense. So sorry, there's by default the game doesn't have it day or night, so we make it become day. Uh, but it's it's just so weirdly worded. It could just say it becomes day when it enters the battlefield. Chapter two. Or, I don't know, not chapter two. Create a colorless don't. You're not, yeah, don't. It's colorless, and it says you're not doing anything around here. Yeah, just don't. If you think about making something colorless, just don't instead. Anyway, we're not, uh... <laughs> please, please tell us there is a don't token. Is there a don't token? No, there's no don't token. Yeah, don't. I mean, this would probably just look like this. It'd just be the sign. As hilarious as that would be. <laughs> yeah, it's Unified Aslant. There's no better way I can describe this. Uh, anyway, uh, th this mechanic at the bottom makes no sense. I don't even know how that a gets activated or what that even looks like. Okay, we got Tristan. Another one. Another super chat. Keep the AI show going for an extra card. You better, you believe it. It's a pay to win show now. Okay, we got the Soul Scout. Looking for them souls. Gonna take them. For a blue three generic, we have a four three human shaman with flying. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you may untap the soul scout and gain control of target artifact or creature. That seems busted. This costs like that sounds really broken. So you just you cast instant sorceries, planeswalkers, untap this thing, uh, and then you gain control of your opponent's stuff. I don't even know. Is that even dual? Like, it's doable, but it also sounds just insane. I think it's broken as hell. It's four, It's a four-mana flyer. You just start rattling off. You can just play Soul Scout, play, like, uh, Crow Mox or something, and you start stealing your opponent's stuff. I mean, did anyone say this is fine? This it danger. The show started it danger, and it's, it's going to come full circle to it danger. Yeah, just play any in instant artifact, enchantment, any non-creature spell. You, you basically save up, um, I don't know, a mana crypt for this thing. It's, it works all the same. Does it need to be tapped uh, to untapped in this case? If it doesn't, if uh, you do, nor is it cast. I believe you probably does need to be tapped. I don't think that is that complicated, too hard to pull off. All right, we got flavor text. We always love the AI flavor text. This is the heart of the brains coming to watch by the sky. Even Aragorn is just the odds or my runk in the ditch of the whip. Our and text priest of the goblin. True words have never been spoken. Moving on. 
we've got, thanks to Emperor Trumdalov. Thank you very much for your super chat. Remember, regenerate taps the permanence, so the front removes blockers. No, giving something regeneration gives it a shield, and when it's when it gets when it receives lethal, it taps. I, I don't know exactly how it was worded for the other cards um, that you're talking about, but I, that's it's only once it, it is dealt lethal damage that it's removed from combat uh, and it taps. Okay, but you know what? That super chat was not in vain. Uh, we're going to look at a card here. We got Anathem the Ronin. It's a black, green, one generic saga. Okay, it's got uh, for chapter one, draw three cards, then discard a card. Oh my god. So immediately you get like already immediate value and then next turn you get to do it again <laughs> three mana draw three discard one okay chapter three until end of turn each non-black creature you control has space power and toughness eight eight and has shroud what is going on here this is beyond nuts so for the vampire players zombie players maybe Mono black token players, if you're looking for a win condition, you got it here. It's the, it is the anthem of all anthems. It is the anthem of Ronin, and it will turn all your puny crap into eight eight shroud creatures. Yeah, anathem, yeah, anathem, the danger. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, turns out the AI should stop making sagas. Yeah, they were, it was sort of neatly designed before, legible, like they, they make sense, but they're too damn strong. Until end of turn? I mean, there won't be another turn after this turn. That's the last turn! Don't print. It's, it's like, don't print. But still, emergency ban, just to be sure. Yeah. Emergency ban on spoil upon seeing on spoiler page. Finally, win con for my Tom Bombadil deck. This card will turn any deck into uh, a winning deck. As far as I'm concerned. Yeah, the skill difference. <laughs> What is Tom Bombadil? Does Tom Bombadil tutor for this stuff? Tom Bombadil tutors this? Oh my god. This is just insane. How the hell does this Zyber? Yeah, I mean... Would, would you re-rank this? A power 10 card? I would rank it as a power 10 card. I don't want to see this even come into existence. You can have this, like, turn 2. Turn 2, draw 3, discard a card. Just, I think it's beyond nuts. Next super chat come from Steve Cooper. Thanks so much for your super chat. I'm gonna look at another AI card. Okay, four mana. We got uh, the Zillamancer 4X Sting. This is a Star Star Dragon. Ooh, colorless dragon. I think it's cool. It is the year of the dragon for people who celebrate the Lunar New Year. Flying. It's got Fathomless Devour 1. I don't even know. I don't even remember what Devour me meant in the first place. But this is, you cannot fathom. It's Fathomless Devour. It will devour everything. Whenever Zillamancer, Forax, Sting, or another ally, was this even an ally in the first place, enters the battlefield under your control, you may tap target creature and opponent controls and put a plus one plus one counter on a creature that player controls. Was that even good? Did that even do anything for us? So when enter the battlefield or another ally, you can tap target creature and opponent controls. Okay, that's good for us. But then you put a plus one plus one counter on a creature that player controls. That's bad for us. Also, it dies immediately. It die. It doesn't specify anything, or how it does. Yeah, it says it's literally a zero zero. This is not defined, which means it goes straight into the graveyard. It, it will. It will stick around to just get a blink of its ETB ability, and that's it. So for four mana, it's basically basically four mana. Tap the creature. You need to have some anthem in play, so that it survives. Devour gets you counters. Uh, does it give you counters immediately when entering the battlefield? Yeah, what does Devour 1 do again? Can anyone help us here? Fathomless Devour. Sack reaches and gets stats? I guess. I can't fathom this. That's why it's fathomless. I can't. We can't. Fa I can't fathom most of these cards. Frankly, this last card was a fathomless Devour. Devour act like copying a creature. Devour sacks creatures for counters on ca uh, on counters on cast. So hold on, I cast this card, I sack a creature, and then I can get I can get a counter. Do less fathoming. I'm trying. 
Okay, Fathom, Devour N. As this creature enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice any number. Oh, it's as it enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice any number of creatures. This enters the battlefield with N times that many counts. Oh, so it doesn't die. So maybe the AI actually understood what the hell the Devour was. So when, er so when we cast it, we can sack creatures and it'll get one counter for each creature we sacrifice. That is terrible. It's a very bad rate. Anyway, I would never play this card. Um, I guess it's doable, though. It said, I guess it's doable. Devour is when it, it ETBs you may... Well, it can't ETB because it's dead already. It will die instantly. So it has to be like when it enters the battlefield. So as it enters the as it enters the battlefield, you as entering the battlefield and entering the battlefield are two different things. Either way, the card's garbage. It's just garbage. What a way to spoil the year of the dragon. Next super chat coming from Platonic Liquid with the Thug Life uh, chat. Okay, we're gonna look at another card. We're gonna look at the Ab Kaor. It is a red, one generic vampire berserker. Very lonely by themselves. It's a 1-4 menacer. It was two, but now it's one. This creature leaves the battlefield. What? It was two. I get, you know what? Maybe it ate something else, and then that creature left the battlefield. <laughs> left the battlefield twice? Yeah, why you leave? Why you leaving around here? Don't go, Abcor. Don't go. Stay. Stay with us. Here, have another drink with us. It was two, but they decided it was too strong, so it became a one-four. Uh, maybe that's that, that's that's possible. Where did he go? Where is he going? Why is he by himself? Where is his other vampire friends around here? I guess he could be an introvert. Does it just leave as soon as it becomes a permanent? I don't know. So it was it was too. This creature leaves the battlefield. I guess it just enters the battlefield and it's gone. You, the only way to make this playable is to make sure that everything enters the battlefield with no abilities. Um, I'm not even going to say this is playable. I don't even know if it's doable. It's just a couple of, bunch of garbly gook. Okay, we got speed the speed cheetah. Thank you very much for your super chat. For the road. We got one more for the road. We got the Azorius Samurai, who apparently betrayed the Azorius, went Boros. Uh, full on Boros here. But was formerly known. The 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 Dothy human horror that was formerly an Azorius creature is now Boros. The color pie is like completely messed up in my mind right now. Anyway, it's got horsemanship for three mana. It's a 3-7 creature, by the way. It's got lifelink. And it has lifelink. Just one more time, just in case you didn't see that first lifelink. Does that have double lifelink? That, that should be a mechanic. Double lifelink. Like, it's not double strike. It will deal the damage just once, but you'll get double the lifelink off of it. Doesn't that not make any sense? This is actually a good card. You like this? For 3 mana, 3, 7. It's like basically a wall. It's an unblockable wall that can attack and get double the lifelink. He's dual wielding lifelink. Just like dual wielding some justice in their hands. Double lifelink, like double strike. Well, that, yeah, that's that's what I'm looking at. Like, don't they don't have to have double strike to get double the lifelink. They could just have double lifelink. So you deal the damage once, but you get twice the lifelink. For the price of one damage. Double lifelink needs to be a mechanic. I'm sure that Zybra's with a lot of people. Quite strong. Gonna get destroyed and limited. Oh, yes. Oh, with the power creep these days, this is worthless and limited. There's better cards than limited. Although, I had probably... It's, and it's a common. It's complete common. Everyone's gonna draft this card. Multiple uh, instances of lifelink do not stack. Not yet! Not yet. Anyway, uh, I like the card. I'm gonna give it a pass. Oops, that's not it. We're not done. Because there are still some super chats. Uh, this was Speed Cheetahs, right? I think this was Speed Cheetahs super chat. Was Speed Cheetahs? I don't remember now. Was this Speed Cheetahs super chat or was it another one? Okay, I might have screwed screwed up. We'll look at another one over Speed. Che I I can't remember if this was Speed Cheetahs super chat or somebody else's. So we'll do another one on Speed Cheetah because I don't want to cheat them out of a super chat. Okay, Forbear Able. 
We have a black, one generic. Oh, also, let's get our super chat sound effect out. Four bear able, a black, one generic, one, one. Wow, that's not grizzly bear power, if you ask me, but it's a Frexian citizen. Really cool art, though. When four bear able deals combat damage to a player, you get an amount of mana. What that amount of mana is, I don't know. You just you choose whatever you want. And if you choose whatever you want, that's broken. Just absolutely broken. An amount of mana. I choose all the mana. Infinite mana. Why would you choose any any less? Anyway, it's complete it's completely busted. And for two mana at that. X is anything. If they don't specify, you sp if the card doesn't specify, you gotta specify for the card. Don't let the cards bully you around. You bully the cards around. <laughs> Hearthstone vibes. Something cool happens. <laughs> All right. Next up, we got a super chat from uh, Jan uh, Janice. Oh, I want to say it's ho uh, it's Hoke, but I'm not entirely sure. One more. Is it Janice or Jans? definitely butchering butchering the name okay we got nickel bolus um in cosplay i guess because this is not the real nickel bolus it is a black four generic human soldier two three or is this like the original nickel bolus is this the origin story was once a human soldier and eventually mutated into a dragon god you know you you drink enough magic you know weird things start to happen Okay, flying. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you can pay one. If you do create a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token, Nickel Bolus comes from very humble origins. Because that's all very regular, normal stuff. Not a broken card at all. Very doable. I don't know who to see the same more feeling. I don't know who to see the same more feeling. This is probably uh, what Nickel Bolus was telling to himself before he went crazy. Yeah, this is what happens when Nickel Bel Bolus messes with shrooms. That's the origin story. Grew shrooms, started going paranoid, turned into a five-color dragon god. Before he knew it, it was all over. Nickel Bolus in is into uh, hor horticulture now. <laughs> Nickel Bolus, the, mar the mushroom gardener. In the ancient days, Nickel Bolus was but a humble soldier who liked to pick mushrooms in the forest. Then one day... He saw a strange glowing mushroom flashing blue, black, and red colors. And it was all... And basically the history wrote itself. Okay, the new anime. I was an elder dragon, but I got turned into a mushroom collecting angel wife. <laughs> it's possible. Okay, next up. We got Platonic Liquid with another one. One more before you was two. Okay, we got the... What the hell is it? The Battle Rats! Oops. We got Battle Rats for a green, red, two generic. It's an instant. Battle Rats deals five damage divided as you choose among any number of targets. Platonic Liquid, you're getting like really weirdly normal cards here. It deals five damage divided as you choose among any number of targets. It's actually sort of cool. It's four mana, five damage, or you can like, it's like a super fire. It's for people's rat stack. Are rats even red and green? I think they're mostly black and some blue. But the art is sick. Wants for a real card, precious. So you know there's like five rats at the targets. I guess there's five. Or I guess there's five rats chewing you out. They come in and take a little bite out of you. One rat at a time. It's okay. It connected to black. Yeah, it's cl close enough to the color pie. My energy has saved the AI stream from devolving into the rank. That's right. Battle rats seem pretty uh, pretty good against rat decks. Oh yeah, that's right. The battle rats. It is the it's the answer to themselves. You got a rat deck? Well, I'll just start dividing the five damage. Kill off all those one toughest creatures. Adam says another one and another one. And another one is the Field of Life. It is an artifact in masterpiece form. Uh, if Field of Life is in your opening hand, you may begin the game with it on the battlefield. Oh my god! It's just a mox! Does it does it change anything? It's a white mox. There's like a lot. So it's basically mox pearl 
It's like, uh, it's, it's a mix of Mox, Pearl, and like Ley Line. And if you don't have this in your hand, you can't even cast it. Yeah, it's Mox, Mox Opal 2.0. Yeah, you can't cast it any other way. I mean, you gotta cheat it and play it through like a Cascade spell or something. Next attempt at f uh, fixing. Yeah, this this is the next level of fixing the box and still broken though. Actually, I think this card is still pretty broken. Like when you want this card, you want it on turn one. Like turn two, three, four, and five. Who cares? That it doesn't even matter anymore. You've probably done the damage. Might I, I actually think this is still broken. It's still a broken box. The most important turns of the game for a box is turn one. And it's actually available to you on turn zero. I think it's I think it's busted. Everyone's ugh, you commander players. You guys think Soul Ring is fair? There is a way to put it in play with uh, Takasa. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible. I think it danger. So we I think even better than Soul Ring. Exactly. Clunky if not in the opening hand. Who cares if it's not in the open? If it's not in the opening hand, it just doesn't even exist in the game. How long is your commander game gonna last? What, four or five turns? Just discard it to some discard outlet or something. Uh, if it had a line of reminder text that says something like cards without casting costs can't be cast from your hand, graveyard, or, or exile, nah, it doesn't need that. If it has no casting cost, you can't cast it. That's just how it is. Anyway, some people say it's Zybers, some say it's busted. You, we know where we divide on this issue. I think it's broken. <laughs> I think it's absolutely broken. If you like the field of life, well, <laughs> whatever. I guess it's a game of commander. Who cares? And then Pallet Jam says nobody is going anywhere. Not today. So that is worth a Ravenous Rage. Ravenous Rage is a blue enchantment for a single blue. With rebound, that is a weird thing to have on an enchantment. If you cast the spell from your hand, exile it as it resolves. That is really weird to have on an enchantment. At the beginning of your next upkeep, you may cast this card from exile without paying its mana cost. And hold on, it's soul ring. It's soul ring. So basically, blue players have access to another soul ring. It's actually delayed soul ring. That's completely useless. Yeah, it's a it's a weirdly delayed soul ring. Um, so it's sort of balanced, but not really. And it's an enchantment soul ring. Yeah, delayed soul ring. Soul, this actually, it's it's still broken because blue gets access to another soul ring, but you can't cast anything that immediate turn. So it's like it has suspend one, which probably makes it a little bit fair. It's not technically an artifact itself. So there might, like you can't search it out with a lot of different cards, a lot of different tutors. There's never a bad time for Soul Ring. Exactly. Yeah, we have two Soul Rings in a row. Double Soul. Oh no, hold on. It's it's got it's it's if you cast the spell from your hand, you have to exile it as it resolves, so you don't get it at all. So the first one doesn't even happen. It's so weird that they put rebound on this. It's basically suspend because you're gonna get it next turn. It resolves and then it comes into play. Yeah, the blue players as if they need more busted cards. I saw a meme. In like a Facebook meme group that had like the most toxic decks and they put mono blue at like the most toxic least toxic to most toxic at the bottom totally agree and with that it's probably not fair probably not fair we can't allow it with that that's it for coffee and mtg today oh thank you very much everyone for joining me everyone loves the ai shows oh remember there's a second if you're watching this on what february 7th uh there is a second show tonight at 8 p.m central standard time be there and be square because there will be no show on friday i have a regional championship coming up i'm a competitive player people i can i qualify for these things Okay, but if you want to be part of those, normally you're part of the show at 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. But there will also be an extra show today at, uh, at 8 p.m. And also there will be no morning show on Monday. But there will be an evening show on Monday because I'm flying back on the same day. Thanks everyone who supports the show. I love your support. If you're a patron on Patreon, member on YouTube, or you super chat to keep the show going on. Or to super chat to help be part of the show. And also thank everyone who shows up in the morning. It's so great to have all you people. Like Speed, we got Re. We've got Feedy Fox, Special Maniac, Teamer, Andy, uh, Majra, Toads, Cap, 
Denrumia, Mark Silla, man, as the Jaded, Alexander A, Palajam, Steve Cooper, David, JML, Teamer, Verkinka, Jess, Toads, Darkest Angel, Tom, Squires, and Ryan, because you guys are the show. So as usual, my coffee crew keep brewing up them coffees, and we'll keep brewing up the man. So take care of yourselves, and I will see you at the next cup.